Good morning and welcome back to Apron Strings. Thank you for watching and for coming by and visiting with me in the kitchen. If this is your first time, I'm so glad you're here. And I hope that you will like what you see and hit that like button. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and um, hit that little bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video. I do a lot of cooking, a little bit of gardening, every now and then I play the piano. And I got a few things in the sewing room coming up that I'm going to try to show y'all how I do. So it's kind of a variety of stuff, but we have lots of fun here. So thank you again for stopping by. Today I'm going to be making some bread, and I, I'm going to be honest, I haven't made this kind of bread before. I've eaten it, but I haven't made it. But I visited Darlene over at Super at 60, and I have told y'all about her channel. And she made this bread along with some chili she was cooking. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that. That's just too easy, and if it's that good, I need to do it. So I'm going to get y'all over to the butcher block. There's not a whole lot that goes into it. And then it has to rise for, you know, till it gets done, two or three hours. And I'm going to cut the light on in my oven, in my big oven. And um, the heat from that light is going to help it to rise. Because in Texas today, it's in the upper 50s. I mean, hey, Mr. Weatherman, it is uh, almost the end of April. But we're having some really cool temperatures. So... I was going to get out and plant some basil and some more stuff, but there's no use planting basil until the soil temperature is above 70, and I don't think much of anything else is going to germinate. I think it's still the soil's still too cool, so I'll just make some bread, because I can heat that oven up and make that bread do. Okay, y'all get on over here and find your spot, and we'll get this made and then taste of it. Hey, it really doesn't take a whole lot to make. We need to put into our bowl three cups of flour, and I'm just using all-purpose flour this time. And I'm gonna need, she used a fourth of a teaspoon. I want a little more yeast in it than that. I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon of yeast. And a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just using uh, sea salt. Work better if I turn the spoon the right way, wouldn't it? And I'm going to whisk that all around a little bit so my <coughs> salt won't be right on top of my yeast. Now I keep my yeast in the refrigerator, so I'm going to put it back in there right quick. Before I forget. And I'm just going to try to do this by hand. I'm going to use my uh, Swedish dough hook because that helps to mix stuff around better. And this is warm water, about like uh, a baby's bottle or like you would bathe a baby in. I just usually put it on my wrist and make sure that it's not hotter than it would be, you know, for that purpose if I was going to give a baby a little wash up. It's been a while since I've done that. My youngest grandson's 15. You just want to get all of this good and moist mixed as best you can as in any bread dough. Now when she was doing it, she let it rise about three hours. So I've got this mixed, and it's a sh little damp, shaggy mess I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I'm just going to leave it in this same bowl, and uh, I'm going to put a cover over it, and I'm going to let it rise. Uh, until it's double and then we're going to put it on some parchment paper and let it rise again but I'm gonna uh, in the end I'm gonna put it in my 
Dutch oven that I heat screaming hot and set the parchment down in it and let it bake. So I'll bring y'all back in a little bit when we get ready to put it on the parchment and let it do its second rise. Okay y'all, my dough has just about risen double. I am going to put a little flour on the top here and on my fingers so I can, because it's real sticky. Kind of like when you're making your bread, you want to put, you want it to clean the side of the bowl. So I want to be able to get it all off. It's very soft dough. There it is. It's a coming out. This is a no knead dough, but I am going to pull it and tuck it a little bit to make my little rounded feller here. Get it in my hand so I can roll it over. shaping purposes for right now, I'm going to put it in this little pot. But the reason I use two pieces of parchment together is because the pot I'm going to bake it in is wide. So let me see if I can get it in here just to start shaping it. But I'm just going to let it sit here uncovered. See it jiggles. It's got a good softness to it. I'm going to let it sit here while I get my oven preheated to 450 with my cast iron enameled pot in there because that's what I'm going to bake it in. And it's bound to be hot because it's changed colors on me here. Yes, it's very hot. Get the bread in it. And I'm going to use this spatula and um, get this parchment back a little bit where it won't get down into my bread. Being very careful not to touch the pot with my hand. See, I've got my um, bread in the pan, and I'm getting this parchment smoothed out so that when it rises, I won't have a bunch of parchment cooked into my bread. And I'll have to scoot y'all back a little bit and put it back in the oven for 30 minutes. And Okay, it's been 30 minutes, and I'm going to get my pot out and check my bread. y'all it's looking good let me get you where you can see now I'm gonna put it back in there to brown it okay y'all I'm fixing to uh, get this bread out and have a look at it let it cool and then I can't wait to taste it Brand up pretty. Let me get all this heat off over here, although it feels good to me today. 
Let me hold it over here where y'all can see, and then I'm going to get it out on the rack to cool. See how pretty? Oh my goodness. All it needs is some carried yellow butter. Now my parchment should be handle handleable. Is that a word? I just made it a word. Loaded. It's okay to handle because it just came right out, didn't it? I'll just uh, reach down in there and flip it up, hold it, and get the bottom. Look at the bottom. Get that pot back on the stove. That flower that was in the bottom is on it, but it's pretty crispy. Gonna be good. I gotta let it cool and then I'll cut it and we'll see what we think about it if it's a do over. But I'm pretty sure it's a do over because it looks good. And don't forget, I got this recipe from um, Darlene over at Super at 60, S O U P E R at 60. So Y'all go over there and subscribe to her channel and help her get up to a thousand and more and tell her that Apron Strings sent you. She's got some good recipes and I um, think you'll enjoy them. But I know it'll tickle her to death for her channel to grow pretty good right now. So we'll do our part to help her. Now I hope y'all have enjoyed this. I'm... Um, I'm not ending the video right this minute, though, because I want to come back and cut this in a little bit and show y'all what it looks like. So I'm going to go rest a bit because I've been busy all day long. And when this cools enough that I can cut it without mashing the crumb on the inside, I'll slice some of it up and bring y'all back and show you. And then I might give you a little pep talk like I usually do. And then we'll get off of here till the next time. I thought while I was waiting for bread to cool, I would just come play the piano a couple of songs. I haven't done that in a long time. And I'm home by myself for a little while, and I just wanted to play, and I just thought I'd turn the camera on. And if y'all know the hymns, then sing along with them. I do this one every time, but I love it. So I'm just going to start with Amazing Grace. Most of you know that song. It's one of the good old ones. It has a lot of meaning to it. So if you know it and you want to sing, sing along with it.
away for a while, your fingers get stiff and you make lots of mistakes. But I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there anyhow for y'all. And if you don't like it, just fast forward past it and watch me cut some bread. Here's my bread knife. Keep trying, you'll find it. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's still a little bit warm. Oops. I'm going to pull that knife back on, my, on that metal. Okay, we'll look at the same time. How's that? Is that fair? Look at there. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And that was so easy to make and so airy and pretty. I did see where uh, on another channel a man, a bread maker, was making bread and he said that you get a lot airier loaf cooking it in um, a pan like I did that one, a pot with a lid on it, than in a loaf pan. Now, I don't know why, but, and he was doing sourdough bread. I'm going to let my butter get soft and, well, I need to get a picture of this bread. Put it on there while it's warm and let it melt a little bit. I'm real pleased with this. I'll definitely make this again. That's easy. If you know somebody's coming that evening for supper, just get it done and let it do its three hours rising. You know, I put it in the oven with the light on and that makes it just a perfect temperature for rising. But I'm very pleased with this. Thank you, Darlene, for the recipe and the instructions. Um, hope y'all visit her channel, Super at 60. Let her know I sent you and try the bread. It's good. And I'm going to get on with my rat killing. And speaking of rats, went out there this morning and Rona had killed. I'm talking about it wasn't a mouse. It was a big old rat. Almost big as her kittens. That style my eye itches. Anyway, I'm glad that she's a rat killer because we got rats in the country and they need to leave one way or the other. Get the Pied Piper. I guess I'll just get Rona to do it. I'll be back here in a day or two with another good recipe, and uh, y'all come back here and join me where I won't be by myself, and learn something good to cook for your family. Good Lord bless and keep y'all. Make your memories, hug your kids, hug your grandkids, love on each other, and show love. That's what we need in our world. We need families to bind together and uh, be compatible and be families. I'll see y'all in a day or two.